Now let me summarize for e each of these three basic circuit elements the effect of uh, the type of the circuit element on the current voltage relationship and how this thing looks like in the uh, phasor diagram. It's just a summary. Right, so we have a circuit element in here. Uh, sorry, a circuit element in here. We uh, might be a resistor or a capacitor or an inductor. We don't know. Um, it's connected to an AC circuit. Uh, I don't know what's in there. Uh, I don't care. So on this branch, I'm interested in two quantities. One is the current that's passing over the circuit element. And the other one is the potential drop. Again, just keep in mind that this is a, basically potential drop is defined by using the same arrow. So therefore, if you change the direction of the arrow, both quantities change sign. But uh, um, the, what we are going to tell is, uh, is not going to change. So what happens is that both the current and the potential drop have the same kind of a sinusoidal time dependence. Uh, so the current has this kind of a time dependence. I just choose the phase to be equal to zero for uh, convenience uh, in here for the current. And so therefore the potential drop also has same kind of a time dependence, but this time there's a phase, right? Uh, so phi is in here is the phase difference between the potential drop and the current, and we have the amplitudes in here. So what happens is that um, the amplitude of the potential drop and the amplitude of the current has a fixed ratio. They are proportional to each other. And this ratio is equal to R for a resistor, where R is the resistance is equal to the um, reactance, inductive reactance, which is equal to omega L for an inductor. And that's equal to Xc, or the capacitive reactance um, for a capacitor. Right, we just call these as the resistance and the reactances. Um, why the name is different. Uh, basically, we have the same relationship between the um, potential difference and the current. It's basically the same ratio. Why there is a different name? Because in the case of a reactance, there is no heat dissipation. For a resistor, there is a heat dissipation. For an inductor, we don't have. Um, so as a result for this uh, thing, uh, right? For, for this case, we just express that uh, simple uh, difference in meaning by just uh, giving these two different things different names. So let's also remember this. Um, average power dissipated is equal to, um, again, one half of I0 V0, or simply I RMS V RMS, right, for a resistor. And P bar is equal to zero for an inductor and for a capacitor. So inductor and capacitor, uh, they don't consume energy, but the resistor consumes energy. Uh, so therefore we have these. And then finally we have the phase angles. So the phase, I'm going to write them then in here. So phase angle is equal to zero for a resistor. Um, I just did this, so as a result, I can remember these. Uh, so the phase angle is plus 90 degrees for an inductor. And the phase angle is minus 90 degrees for a capacitor. Right. So uh, these are the things that we have said, the three things. On the phasor diagram, we have this. So for a resistor, I'm going to draw all three phasor diagrams in here. So for a resistor, we have current and the potential difference, potential drop. Uh, they are in phase. So they are essentially vectors which are parallel to each other. So let me also draw the vector sign in here. So for an inductor uh, in the phasor diagram, we have a picture like that. The current is in here, but the potential drop is making a 90 degree angle with it. But the 
potential drop is essentially is leading the current and for a capacitor uh, we have um, current is like that and um, potential drop is also making 90 degrees but this time it is lagging behind so essentially the difference between an inductor and a capacitor at least for the phase is that the uh, in one case the potential leads potential drop leads and in the other case it lags behind it um, there's another aspect in here that I need to summarize so let's just talk about the reactants in here uh, I'm going to start with the uh, inductive reactants so let's just consider a situation where um, an inductor is connected to an EMF device, in which case the EMF is equal to the potential drop in here. So that's VL, um, there's an EMF in here. So both on the phasor diagram and as quantities as well, um, these two quantities are the same. So as a result, the, um, the current in here uh, and the EMF have the same relationship that we have explained before. So on the phasor diagram, this is going to look like that. So the current is like this and the EMF is like that. Right? In any case, what I'm interested in here is that basically the current is equal to EMF divided by the um, inductive reactance. And inductive reactance in that case is equal to omega times L for an um, inductor. Um, it changes with frequency, it depends on the frequency, and it is interesting to note these two different behaviors. So. Um, two different behaviors at the, these two limits. So we have these limits in here. We have DC limit. This is basically the limit where um, the frequency goes to zero. Why do I call this as the DC limit? Because a DC current can actually be considered an, uh, as an AC current where the frequency is zero or the, the period is infinite. Right? You can also think of it like this, or you can think of also uh, it like that. So, I don't know, Let, let's just look at it, for example, the EMF versus time graph. Uh, a small omega essentially means that the, uh, the period is so large that the EMF is changing very slowly. So as a result, I don't know, uh, I mean, this might be a year, for example, the period might be a year. So as a result, when we are doing some experiment over a short amount of time compared to that period, let's say, we do the experiment within a day, but the period is one year, let's say. So within the time scale of the period, uh, I'm sorry, within the time scale where we do, do this experiment, the EMF doesn't change much. So as a result, it behaves like a, 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 a DC EMF, actually. So as a result, for this reason, omega goes to zero um, can be considered as the DC limit. And there's this other limit in here, um, let's say it like this. This is high frequency limit. Um, this is HF. Um, this is actually uh, usually called like that. It's high frequency. Uh, but I'm just going to say that this is omega goes to infinity. So, but of course, for circuits, there's some kind of a practical limit. So there are these microwave circuits where the frequencies are very high, but it's not that higher. Um, but in any case, I mean, uh, these are very large frequencies. So what's, what do we expect from as, as the behavior of the uh, inductor in these circuits? So in high frequency limit, let's just start it like this. In that case, uh, basically the current changes very rapidly with, uh, with time. So if I draw the current versus time graph, um, the current is something like that, or the same thing for the EMF. It just changes rapidly. So we know that the function of an inductor in, inside a circuit is to prevent these large, uh, fast changes of the current. So as a result, in this limit, the inductor is going to impede, is going to prevent the flow of the current as much as possible. Right? It's not going to uh, stop the current if that's not possible but it's going to prevent so that essentially is the 
uh, that essentially implies that the the reactance of the um, uh, of the uh, inductor goes to infinity, right? For at high frequencies, the current tends to change quickly, but the inductor doesn't like this, so it tries to prevent this. So as a result, it uh, kind of shows a higher resistance. But again, instead of resistance, we are using the word reactance in here, higher reactance. So that means that, I don't know, let's say for a reasonable amount of the EMF in here, let's say that the EMF is uh, 220 volts, let's say, but the currents will be in milliampères and things like that. So it's going to try to prevent these uh, currents. So as a result, therefore, at high frequency circuits, perhaps, you don't want, uh, uh, you don't want these um, inductors or uh, you only want uh, a smaller value of uh, inductances, uh, for example. Uh, so if you want a current to pass. In any case, so that's one case. So in the DC limit, um, in that case, it's just a DC current, but we know that um, DC essentially uh, corresponds to a situation where um, there is no EMF on the inductor. So as a result, the inductor is going to behave like a, just a wire, right? So that essentially means that, well, it's just a wire and the wire has no resistance. So therefore, um, in that case, of course, the resistance shown by the um, by the inductor is going to go to zero. Uh, so as a result, at least from this physical point of view, uh, this behavior is reasonable. So we also see the same thing for the frequency dependence of the this reactance in that reactance formula. When the frequency goes to zero, reactance goes to zero. That's correct. When the frequency goes to infinity and the reactance goes to infinity. The reason is that um, the inductors do not like rapid changes in the current, so therefore they try to prevent. They are more effective uh, for showing resistance uh, at high frequencies. So we can do a similar kind of a thing for the uh, capacitive reactants. Uh, reactants. Let's just first write down the formula in here. This is 1 over omega c. So you can see that we have the opposite frequency dependence in here. So let's talk about the C limit in here. Uh, omega goes to zero. And high frequency limit in here, where omega goes to infinity. Right, so we have a circuit like this. Uh, just a single EMF is connected to a capacitor. What happens in the case of a... Um, a DC circuit, so this is the limiting situation, a DC circuit. What happens if you, if I connect a DC device to a capacitor? Well, the capacitor becomes charged, and once it is charged, of course, it's not going to uh, conduct electricity anymore. So as a result, the current will become equal to zero, which means now at this limit, or at the limiting case at least, the Capacitor shows infinite resistance, so the capacitive reactance would be infinite in here. And the formula tells us that uh, this is the case. When frequency is zero, uh, the reactance is equal to infinity. So no current will pass in that limit. What happens in the high frequency limit? Well, in the high frequency limit, um, this doesn't happen. So therefore, the uh, with the changing and rapidly changing uh, EMF, of course, the plates are going to uh, get filled up and emptied. So as a result, uh, whatever is happening on that plate, the, the same thing is going to happen on the opposite plate. So therefore, um, at this limit, uh, the capacitor is not going to show any um, resistance to the flow of the current. So therefore, in that limit, we then get uh, this thing. So it's not something that we have seen before, we have analyzed before, um, but at least formula tells us that in the high frequency limit, therefore, the capacitor does not show any reactance at all. Okay, so let's just then remember these. Um, let's uh, come back to the original uh, expression in here. So as a result, the circuit elements show some kind of a dependent, uh, frequency dependent uh, reactances or the resistances. A resistor 
shows the resistance which is independent of frequency. An inductor displays a resistance which is proportional to the frequency, so therefore it just increases with increasing frequency. And a capacitor shows a, um, a reactance uh, that decreases with increasing frequency. Okay, so um, I think I'm just going to add one more thing in here. So these are just results for a circuit element which is either a resistor or a capacitor or an inductor. What happens if it's more complicated, for example? It's just a resistor and a capacitor connected in series or in parallel. In this case, we can kind of say more or less the same thing in here. So let me just write it down in here. So I'm just going to erase everything else in there. But uh, I'm just going to repeat some of these later. Um, what happens if there's uh, uh, some kind of a, a complicated arrangement of resistors, inductors, and capacitors in there? Um, so we also have the same kind of a thing, right? So there is a current passing over the device, right? For this current, I can write down the potential drop uh, around the device. It appears that the, um, the amplitudes are proportional to each other. Uh, but in this general case, we just write down the proportionality constant as uh, we just call it as the impedance. We don't call it a reactance or a resistance or anything like that. It's, we just call it as a uh, impedance uh, because the impedance contain a resistive part and a reactive part as well. So we don't know which one is which. But in any case, that's important. What else? Um, uh, so what else? Uh, there's also a phase difference as well. So this is one of the things that uh, we also need to find. So it appears that the phase difference in that case is just a phase angle that changes between uh, minus 90 degrees and plus 90 degrees. So as a result, for that kind of an arbitrary circuit element, we can still uh, do the same thing, but this time, um, the ratio is perhaps a ratio of the amplitude is a, perhaps a, a more complicated uh, number. It's the impedance that contain a reactive part and a an, uh, resistive part as well. And the phase difference is uh, this time is not that simple, but it's in general between plus 90 and minus 90 degrees. Uh, for the series RLC circuit, we are going to compute these uh, both the impedance and the uh, and the phase. But, uh, of course, let's just say that in that case, this impedance might depend on frequency. It will depend on frequency. Um, so, as a result, uh, um, in I mean, this is actually used in uh, for uh, doing some certain um, jobs in, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, some special jobs. For example, uh, I don't know, if you um, construct a circuit where the impedance as a function of frequency goes to infinite at uh, low frequencies, for example, but goes to a constant value at uh, high frequencies, then you can do a high-pass filter by uh, using this kind of a circuit element. Uh, so that kind of a circuit element is going to just uh, eliminate low-frequency uh, parts of a signal, and so as a result, it will pass um, the, uh, the, the signal currents for uh, very high frequencies, for example. So as a result, I mean, depending on that frequency dependence of the impedance, you can build for um, uh, some specialized devices. All right, so next, we are going to look at the series uh, RLC circuit.